Today on our 2014 Nissan Frontier, we're going to be test fitting the Kurt Aluminum Cargo Carrier. This measures 19 by 60 and fits two inch hitches. Part number C18100. We'll begin our test fit by inserting the shank of the rack into our hitch. You'll wanna watch for the hitch pin holes to line up. With those in line, we'll go ahead and take our hitch pin we're using part number PC3 today and slide it through the holes. We'll attach the clip on the other side and grab a couple of measurements. The closest part of the carrier to the vehicle is going to be from the wall here to the bumper. Get in there and grab our measurement. That's going to measure about four inches overall to the rear of the vehicle. We're adding about eight inches. And our ground clearance is going to come to 13 and three quarters of an inch. We'll go ahead and pull the pin in the clip here at the base of the rack and fold it down into the loading position. We're going to reinsert this. And as you can see, our measurements have changed here. So the closest part of the rack to the vehicle is now going to be about seven and a half inches. Overall, we've added about 26 and three quarters of an inch. And the ground clearance from the back of the rack here comes to about 16 and a quarter inches. As you can see, the exhaust exits on the passenger side of this vehicle, and it faces away from the rear of the vehicle, so hauling heat-sensitive materials shouldn't be an issue. We'll open our tailgate and check for clearance to see if we can lower it down all the way. And as you can see, we have plenty of room. The tailgate's going to break over the rack at about 27 and 3 quarters of an inch. So you want to keep that in mind when, ha when stacking items higher than that on your carrier. With our carrier loaded on our 2014 Nissan Frontier, we're going to go ahead and take the Kurt Aluminum Cargo Carrier 19 by 60, part number C18100, out on our test course so you can see how it performs in action. Here on our test course, we'll go ahead and take it through the slalom. This will show you the side-to-side -side action, such as sharp corners or evasive maneuvers. Secondly, we'll go through our alternating speed bumps. This will give you the twisting action, which simulates potholes, hitting a curb, uneven pavement, or hitting road debris. Lastly, we'll go through our solid speed bumps. This will show you the up and down action, such as driving through a parking lot, parking garage, or out of a driveway that has a steep grade.